Hey, good morning, everybody. Here we are. <clears throat> End of the week. We're down on Friday. And here we are. We get this opportunity to get our day started off right once again with our dose of truth, our dose of God's Word. And this morning, I want to look at a passage that John the Baptist is saying over in John, the third chapter. Um, the, the bigger context um, is dealing with the, the people coming to Jesus. Who are you? And John's telling them, I'm not the one, and so on and so forth. Uh, but he makes a statement. I think it's, it's a short statement, but it is a very profound statement for you and I to really take strong and deep consideration and thought of. He says in John 3 and in verse 30, he tells the people, he says, he must increase, speaking of Jesus, but I must decrease. He who comes from above is above all. And he, he who is from the earth is earthly and speaks of the earth. He who comes from heaven is above all. Notice and let us understand this profound statement that John the Baptist says in verse 30. He, Jesus, must increase. Me, George, must decrease. You can put your name in that slot as well. Now, what does that mean? Think about this for just a moment. So many times we, when we think about Jesus and we think about uh, re religion and those types of things, you know, oftentimes we we want we want Jesus. Uh, we we like the concept of Jesus. We want the blessings of Jesus. We want uh, those things that are contained within Jesus. You know, uh, we want all of those types of things. But so many times it's based on our terms. It's based on our will and not necessarily the Father's will. You may be saying, well, "What are you talking about?" Well, just think about it for just a moment. Um, have you read something in the Bible? Maybe something has been pointed out to you in the Bible and you just say, well, I just don't believe that. I just don't believe that's what Jesus said. But yet we can read it uh, for ourselves. Who is over who at that point? We are over Jesus. Our will, our wanting of a certain thing to be true is superseding, is over that of Jesus. I'll just give you a quick example, just because it's just so simple. Mark 16, 16. I know I use this a lot, uh, but it's just a very simple illustration. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, Jesus said. And maybe you've been taught, maybe you've been led to believe, maybe you feel that that, that baptism has absolutely nothing to do with salvation. Regardless of what Jesus said in the text, it does. So what how does that all shake out? If we reject that, who is over who? My will is over Jesus' truth. That's, that's where we find ourselves. So John says, he, Jesus, must increase. We must decrease. Even when Jesus was in the garden, and he was praying, Luke 22 and verse 42. He says, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. That's the mindset that we need to have. Is that it doesn't make any, in other words, it doesn't matter what we want to be true. Jesus, what is true? It doesn't matter what I've been taught. It doesn't matter what I feel. But if we, we have an attitude is I'm willing to change. I, I know that I can be wrong. I know that I can be taught wrong. I, I can know uh, that uh, having, ha having an understanding that, you know, uh, I can be mistaken. My preacher can be wrong. So Jesus, you know, I'm going to step back. You teach me. Mark 16, 16 again. That can be a hard pill to swallow. But notice that here's John. He said he must increase and I must decrease. That's what a profound attitude that we need to have in our approach to the scriptures and approach to the truth. So many times, and I know we don't realize this, um, you know, maybe a lot of times we don't see this, but so many times what we want to be true supersedes what is true. So many times uh, we, can, we can have these blinders on is that we can't see the truth because we've already come to a conclusion what the truth is. So it comes back to John's statement, I must decrease and Jesus must increase. It's not my will, it's 
his will and so many things that we believe is our will, not necessarily Jesus' will. Pretty powerful statement of what John is stating here, isn't it? Very profound, very important uh, for us um, uh, to, to, to see and to understand. And my friend, I want you to take this with you. If, if maybe something is pointed out to you in God's word, maybe you read something and it goes completely against the grain of what you've been taught or what you feel or what you think has been right and say, well, I just don't believe that. Even though it's not very difficult to understand, like Mark 16, 16. Uh, friend, I want you to take this with you and I want you to understand. You have now put yourself above Jesus. Your will has increased and Jesus' truth has decreased. We need to flip that around, don't we? We need to flip it around. Short but very powerful statement of John the Baptist uh, is putting forth here. And I'm going to leave you with that. I'm going to I'm going to leave you with that to to um, uh, <clears throat> to meditate on that and to chew on that and think about that. Go back and look at this John uh, chapter three and in verse thirty uh, in particular what we talked about this morning. Let Jesus increase and let us decrease in the things that are true, because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. John fourteen. Six, let him increase and let our own will decrease so that we can truly understand what the truth of God's word is. Hey, um, Lord willing, we'll get back uh, Monday morning. We'll get kick our week off. We'll get another dose of God's truth, another dose of God's word today over the weekend. Get in your Bibles, study it, and open that book up. Open the Bible up, the word of God up, reverently, respectfully and humbly so that you can truly understand what the word of God says. Not what we think it says, but what it says. Hey, I hope you all have a great day and Lord willing, we'll see you Monday morning and uh, y'all have take care.